Even when those circumstances are not good, it is based upon our faith that we know that God will prevail and God will see us through. So it does, in fact, develop faith. And it also serves others. What a great encouragement that we can be if we show thankfulness to other people. The Bible tells us, well, let's look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Do everything without complaining or arguing, arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation, in what you shine like stars in the universe. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, I just pray that you move in an awesome and powerful way this morning. And Lord, I pray that as we understand what it means to be thankful and to be in your will and what an impact that has in our lives and in our family and our homes and our workplace in, in the towns and cities that we live in. Father, what an impact it has when we of all people that should be thankful are thankful. So Lord, I pray now that I may decrease that you may increase in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's look again at uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Do everything without complaining or arguing. Well, that's going to be a whole message there, could not it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, have you ever gotten where sometimes you feel like you just, you just get in a mode where you just sort of complain about everything? No. <laughs> <laughs>
You know, I don't like to be around somebody that complains all the time. And if you have like someone like that in your life, you almost go to them and say, you, you think, oh no, here they are. <laughs> They'll complain about something, I can guarantee you that. Sometimes you think, well, I'll help out a little bit, I'll just give them something to complain about. <laughs> But listen, my friends, as believers, now again, you can't decide, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to, I'm going to. You can't do that. You've got to have that relationship right. And then you become thankful in all things. It is not an easy thing. That verse is a difficult verse. To be thankful in all things. Again, it's not for all things, it's in all things, and it's because of Jesus Christ. And when I was looking at this message this week, I looked at myself and I thought, am I being, am I showing the truth of God in me where it is appealing to others? It is attractive to others. And I tell you what, when you think about that, it'll change your day, how, how you react to different events in your life. And if you find yourself complaining a lot and arguing a lot, you really need to focus on where you're at with Christ. There was a survey done of under 30 years old and what their view were was on evangelicals. You hear that word evangelical. What's an evangelical? I don't know, but I think I got some ointment that can probably take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's someone who believes the good news. That is, you are evangelicals. We believe that Jesus, that we are sinners, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Our sins are forgiven. We're heaven bound. We believe that God has, uh, has a will for our lives and that God will be there with us throughout our walk and into eternity. That's evangelicals. Those that are under 30 years of age, this is what they said of evangelicals. 85% of them are, are hypocritical. 78% are old-fashioned. Do you know you're old-fashioned? 75% are too much into politics. 72% are out of touch with reality. 70% are insensitive to others. And 68% of them says, we're just downright boring. <laughs> well, there's some other factors that come into the reason people feel that way. But in some of it, we may not be real attractive. We may not be really a real appealing as evangelicals. And one of the big things about that is to be thankful to Proverbs 11, 11. Through the blessing of the upright, that's you and I, a city is exalted. But by the mouth of the wicked, it is destroyed. I have put a little test for myself this holiday season. That I'm going to do a, not an underhanded thankfulness, a one-handed thankfulness. Five times a day, I'm going to let someone know I'm thankful for what they're doing. And can you imagine that if, if all of us every day in our area that we live in, primarily all of us who are here in Bedford, take five times to thank somebody at the grocery store for bagging the groceries, thank someone at 
somebody say, I love you and I thank God for you. So at the conclusion of service, we were all hugging each other, I love you and I thank God for you. And he had said that over many of the revivals that he had done, the thing that people enjoy the most and remember the most is saying, I love you and I thank God for you. You know, we should be a thankful folks. Not only for those around us, those that come in on the highways and byways of life, but for each other. I'll tell you what, I was blessed this week to be able to compose that letter that, that many of you will get today. And again, as I, I mentioned in my prayer, as I, as I took time to, to pause fully and pray for each and every individual. And my prayer was thankfulness. Just for what they mean. And I, when I looked at it, I thought, you know what? And, and I don't mean this wrong. I guess I mean it as I'm saying it. But anyway. You know, sometimes, unfortunately, at funeral homes, we tell the person that's deceased or tell others what that person meant to them, how thankful they were for what they had done, how they done that. And, and you know, there's part of me, and I, I understand that, and I'm not trying to say anything bad about it, but there's part of me that said, did you ever tell them that? Did you ever take the time to say, man, I thank you for, for, for just being there for me, and, or whatever may be the case, I thank you for you always have a smile on your face, for your love and your compassion. And folks, we of all people, the thankfulness must begin here. And taking the time before service and after service, and I think we are thankful. But well, let's give time to say thank you for what you mean. And, and like I said, when I, when I was in those prayers, man, and you, you got to take this right. I know your family, so I hope you do take it right. I'll apologize ahead of time. And actually, it was Daniel's fault. But anyway, um, <laughs> I thought, now, how in each envelope that I do, am I just going to say, okay, Lord, I'm just I'm thankful for them, maybe. But you know, when I found myself just pausing for a moment and I actually saw your faces, it came pretty easy. A wild thing. And how each one blesses me. And how each one draws me closer to Jesus Christ. And man, I tell you what, I just, I had a little, you ever had a pity party? You can't get anybody to show up. I had a little praise party. And it was pretty awesome. We of all people should be thankful and appealing to others. Okay, there are four personal benefits from being thankful. Number one, it keeps us in God's will. We've already seen in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it is God's will that we're thankful in all things. It is God's will that we're thankful people. So one of the things that always we hear, uh, I hear as a pastor, and uh, many people say over and over, and you probably said yourself, I just want to know what God's will is for my life. I know that that peace and the contentment that I don't have or that, that comes into my life and seems to flow back out, I don't have it on a consistent basis. I just want to know what God's will is. It's not that I'm saying I'm not going to do it. I got guidelines, God. It's not that. I just want to know what it is. And in the Bible, God says, listen, this is the will. If you want to be in my will, you want to be in the center of my will, you be a thankful person. Number two, it makes me better, not bitter. 
It makes me better, not bitter. When you begin to look at those things that you are thankful for, and folks, we know this is not for us believers. This is not a Thanksgiving Day, one day event. This is a Sunday, Monday through, a 724 event to be thankful. Because this old world, it gets pretty good to start thinking about all the things that you're not thankful for. And things just driving you crazy. <laughs> and the idiots you got to deal with sometimes, right? <laughs> but it makes me better to be a thankful person. Not bitter. Especially when times are tough. You know, it's not hard to be a thankful person when everything's going your way. I mean, I mean that's pretty much, you know, my health is good, my uh, physically I'm doing okay, financially I'm doing okay, I don't have too many idiots in my life, I'm doing okay. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm thankful. But it is what we have that the world don't have is that we can be thankful in something, not for something. And it's especially true when times are tough. <coughs> you know, we have plenty of reasons, or some may say excuses, of why we can be bitter. There's plenty of reasons out there. And I got a feeling if we took time this week, many of you stand up and say, let me, I got a couple reasons right there. <laughs> or I can, I can tell you some things that, that was done wrong, unfair to me, mistreated, whatever it is. But being thankful makes us better. I will tell you this, in the holiday season in 2016, if you have a grudge against someone now, Get rid of it. It is probably no longer bothering them, but it is paralyzing you. You've got to let it go. It's not easy. You can say, and I'm telling you to forgive them. Listen now. Forgive them even if they don't deserve it. Ah, oh, come on. Let's, let's pack a bag. We're going home. But remember, God forgave you. God forgave me. And I don't deserve it. Believe me, holding a grudge, and I have seen people that have been negatively affected by, affected by holding a grudge for years. It may not hurt that individual you're holding grudge against, but as I said, it can paralyze you. Let it go through the power of Jesus Christ. Be thankful that God has forgiven you, and in return, you're going to forgive others even when they don't deserve it. Number three, it defeats the devil. Do you know that the devil knows how to push your button? He knows the button to push on you. And he's good at it. And he knows that. One thing I, I probably say every week, I know I told you this story before, so anyway, uh, or I told you this story before. But hey, Liz and I over the years have learned to disagree. And I think a positive way to bring benefits out of it. Listen, as husband and wife, any kind of relationship you're in, you're not going to agree all the time. And oftentimes she's just wrong, and I just need to show her. <laughs> but we just we just disagreed. But I was great at her telling me what was her concern in her life, and I knew that I had a button I could push on her that was going to get her attention. She was going to get upset, and I didn't care a bit more about what she was saying. I was just getting ready to. <laughs> Push the button. Praise be unto God. I think we're well over that. And God has blessed us in our relationship. But friends, Satan knows your button to push. And he'll push it quite often. But if you want to defeat the devil, 
when he pushes that button and your response is thankfulness towards God. Now he's got to get his demons together. We've got to go to plan B on this person. And plan B gets implemented and there's still thankfulness, not for the circumstances, but in the circumstances. Lord, I'm thankful that I am not alone in this. Lord, you probably should never leave me. You'll never forsake me. You're walking with me. You will not leave me alone. You will not leave me alone in this circumstances. And though I don't know the answer, and though the future doesn't look strong at this point, Lord, I know that you will see me through, and I am thankful for that. Because I want to be in your will. And I understand being in your will. I'm thankful in all things. Finally, it makes miracles happen. Gratitude is what happens when you thank God after an event has happened or after God has provided for you in some kind of circumstances. That's giving thankfulness. That's gratitude for that. But faith is thanking God in advance. Isn't that awesome? Thanking God in advance for a victory that you're now praying about that you don't have a clue where the answer is coming from. See, we always feel like that God can answer it if we sort of think about it and say, okay, if this happens and this happens and then this happens, then it will all pull together and everything will work out good. So God, look, if this, if we pull this over here, we get this over here, and you do this, and you take your power, and oh, then, then we can get to settle. And sometimes it's one of those things where you say, I don't see a way out of this. Then we always think, I don't know how God's going to know that. Well, we pray in faith, thanking God in advance for that. Matthew eleven twenty four says this. This is awful. awesome. Matthew eleven twenty four. Mark. Mark. Okay. Thank you, folks. I tell you what. When I looked at Matthew and Mark, I thought, boy, I'm gonna have to wing this one. That's all I know. Too many pinto beans last night. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, they're good, but they'll keep you going all night long. <laughs> Maybe I should have shared that. But, uh, Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, I'm thankful. I'm thankful I have a dog because I said, oh, poo, we're good. <laughs> Be thankful in all. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, watch this now, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Now, I tell you what, what sometimes we have issues with that because we want to be in God's will, right? Ask for what you need, and it will happen to you. Believe that it will happen to you. And the answer to this, and one of the things that come in as part of it is that, Listen, if you don't pray in God's will, it's not going to take place. Well, what is God's will? To be thankful. We got the God's will part. As we're in God's will and thankful, our prayers will be guided by that which Jesus Christ desires for our hearts. So we're saying, I got to believe it to get it. In order to, I got to believe I got it in order to get it. Got it? Get it? I got to believe I got it in order to get it. It's praying for rain that morning when they're not calling for it and you grab your umbrella on the way out. We'll conclude with Philippians 4 6, one of the toughest verses in the Bible. Do not be anxious <clears> or <throat> oh, worry, panicking for me to use the word used there. Do not be anxious about anything, 
but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. One of the toughest verses in the Bible. I'm just being honest with you. Do not be anxious, worried, panicking about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Man, it seems like Paul just keeps adding something on to it. Not only in everything, by prayer and petition, but with thanksgiving. Present your request to God and the... Oh, the, watch this. Folks, now I know that you have, you've had this happen in your life before. I hope it's on a normal basis. When you go to prayer and prayer and petition with thanksgiving with a concern in your heart, and then this is what happens in prayer, and the peace of God which transcends in all understanding. The world cannot understand it. will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Praying, not panicking. Worshiping, not worrying. Let's live our lives as a thankful people. Let's be appealing to the world to say, I don't know what they've got, but I would sure like to know more. And in that way, we'll be in the midst of God's will. God will be pleased, and we will have peace and comfort. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your word today. Oh, Father, I believe I'm in the midst of people that desires to be appealing to this lost world. It won't happen if we argue and gripe about stuff. That's what the world does. But when in all things we are thankful, and we spread that by people that we run into each and every day, that we thank them for whatever service they're providing for us. And we thank them for just being men. Father, it starts with our own lives and we're thanking you, thanking those within our household, thanking those within our church family. Father, may it just bleed over into all the people that we come in contact with. We'll do that, Father, by being right with you. That's where it starts. Lord, today during this invitation, some may want to come and pray with you, desiring just to draw a little closer to you. Some may want to speak to you during the time while the music is being sang and just where they're standing. That's okay. But Father, today let us draw closer to you so that we can be appealing to the world through our thankfulness. In Jesus' name.